let's talk about story-based leadership, the secret behind Steve Jobs' success. Let's first define what story-based leadership is. It's when a leader uses their story as a basis for the success. When you look at the 10 most admired companies in the world, according to Fortune magazine, every single one of these leaders on this list are story-based leaders. I'm going to focus on three today. For my European friends, did you know that Howard Schultz, the former CEO of Starbucks, his first trip to Milan, Italy in 1983, he gets to Italy, he's sitting at the espresso bars, and he's like amazed. He's inspired. He's looking at the interaction between the baristas and the customers, and he's like, wow, they have a real connection, they have a real community. He brings his Italian experience back to the States, and he wants to create and recreate this Italian experience. Otherwise, Starbucks is just a coffee shop. Look at someone like Walt Disney, for the Danish in the room. Walt Disney flies to Copenhagen, Denmark, visits Tivoli Gardens, the second oldest amusement park in the world, and fiercely jots down notes because he's so inspired, takes those inspirations from Copenhagen, brings it back to the States, and creates Disneyland. A more recent executive at Disney, Disney his name is Doug Lip. Doug found that when he researched companies, he found that every single successful company all have two leaders that work hand in hand. You have the promoter, the marketer, the storyteller, and you have the more analytics, the logics, the finance person. In Disney's case, Walt Disney was a promoter, storyteller. His brother, Roy Disney, was a finance guy. When you look at Apple, no one will argue that Steve Wozniak was the brains behind the Apple products. He was a programming guy. But Wozniak also openly says that if not for Steve Jobs, there wouldn't be no Apple. Because Steve Wozniak just gave away things. But Steve Jobs was a promoter. He was a marketer. People sell products. Products don't sell themselves. And the people that sell the best products are story-based leaders like Steve Jobs. Just the very name Apple, Steve knew that people fear things they don't know. And back in the 70s, people fear computers because they're like, what are these things called computers? So what does Steve do? I'm going to name my company called Apple because it's a really cute word and it's a nice fruit. Who can be afraid of apples? He was also a fruitarian because he liked eating apples. But lastly, back in that day, they actually had phone books with business directories, and he used to work at Atari, so we called it Apple because Apple was before Atari. <laughs> now, Steve Jobs also understood how to persuade. Aristotle talked about persuasion in ethos, logos, and pathos. So the ethos is this. Based on my credibility, if I say to you, I used to work for American Express on Wall Street where I built out global sales decks for our largest, biggest clients in the world. I've written five, six books, and I've given over a thousand presentations in the world. That's the credibility, but that's not as important as the logos part, which is the facts and figures. When I say to you that stories are 22 times more memorable than facts, that's not my opinion, that's based on science. But the most important thing about persuasion is pathos. There's an author named Carmine Gallo, he wrote a book called Talk Like Ted, and he found that 65% of our effectiveness as communicators was based on the pathos, which was the storytelling, the emotion behind everything. And Steve Jobs was brilliant at this. When you talk about the smartphone, you talk about this experience that you're having when you're opening up a box to see a phone. And the most brilliant thing that Steve Jobs did was he combined storytelling with persuasion and images. According to 3M, they studied that images are 60,000 times absorbed faster than words. And if you look at the Epiphanous campaign called Think Different that he created about 20 years ago with Shad Day, an agency in, based in LA. If you watch this one minute video, it's a genius. The music cues, there's this beautiful string instruments and piano playing in the background, and Richard Dreyfuss' voice says, here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers. And as his suave, smooth voice is heard, and the background music is listened to, you have an image of Albert Einstein, and Bob Dylan, and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and Richard Branson. And by the end of this video, they say, they call them crazy, but we see genius. And those that are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones that do. And the music fades, and then you sit there watching this, and you're like, wow, I wanna buy an Apple product now.